I mean, that you got out and you went out and you dug up a hole and you found some treasure. And, you know, it's just mass, you know, everything that you wanted, the treasury was there in that chest. You know, when we looking for treasure, you know, you have to, before you go treasure hunting, you have to be able to be prepared and get get all the tools and your implements and everything together to go look for treasure. Well, it's, a treasure is something that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Treasure is something that you look for. There is something that you need or something that you really want. Uh, and so when we're looking for treasure, it's something that we look for. And then just think, if you found the treasure chest, <coughs> just think if you found this treasure chest, then you'd be joyful. And it kind of reminds me of this of the movie City Slickers with Billy Crystals. I don't know how many of you have seen that movie City Slickers. But they were always out looking for this treasure. And when they finally did it, Billy Crystal did a happy dance and he started dancing around because he was rejoicing because he found this treasure. Well, when you find the treasure, you also want to guard it so you will not lose it. And even in that movie that they found the treasure and they did the happy dance and they were excited about it and they were rejoicing over it. But then some guys came in and robbed them of that treasure, even though it was a farce, it was just, they didn't really, it was a setup thing that was um, part of the dude ranch thing that, that, that they really thought they found a treasure, but it really wasn't, it was a phony map and everything else. But you would also would like to uh, keep the treasures once you, you got it. So you would guard it. Well, going back to the Israelite people, going back in Exodus 19, it, they came to the place at Mount Sinai. And they came to the place, and where that mountain was located, it was so majestic. And it was almost like an amphitheater that when Moses was able to speak, the whole congregation could hear. All two million people could hear it. And so he was brought to a place that was designed by God for him to be there so he could speak to the people. Well, God told Moses that he needed to speak to the people. And I want us to look at Exodus 19.5. I have several verses I want to go through, and I just got stuck on this one verse. So praise God for that, because the teaching that he gave me. Exodus 19.5 says, Now therefore... If ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for the earth is mine. This was the statement that God told Moses personally to tell the people. Now, when we the part that I want to look at is that you shall be a peculiar treasure. That we are God's peculiar treasure to him. We are more valuable than gold, silver, or rubies. We're more valuable to him than anything. Now, God is searching for people to become his children. Amen. Or searching. He searched you out. Yes. And why he did it was the Holy Spirit was diligently seeking us to be 
part of the family of God and to become Christians. Yes. And to be Christ-like. In John 15, 26, he says, When the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, were seated from the Father, he shall testify of me. So God is sending the Holy Spirit as his agent to draw all men unto him. He is searching out individuals' hearts that will respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That the Holy Spirit will testify of the birth, death, and resurrection of the Jesus Christ. Christ and us as to confess him as our Lord and Savior. Yes. So as in the natural, we go out to search for buried treasure ourselves. God is using the Holy Spirit to search the hearts of men that will become the children of God. <clears throat> that they are he's searching out for people to be Christians or to become Christ-like, to become sons and daughters of the Most High God. So he is searching out. Then it says that that when you when we are out there, we have to have tools. The tools. And what he did is that the tools that he sent was that to attain the treasure, before you go out treasure hunting or anything, God had to make a sacrifice. He had to make a sacrifice. Mm. And that was his son, Jesus Christ. Mm. And we know in John 3, 16 and 17, he says, So God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him may be saved. So God, in searching for his treasure, which are the people, and it's us, as his peculiar treasure. Have you ever thought that you are God's treasure? Boy. But he had to make that sacrifice. Just like people have to make sacrifice to go look for treasure, they have to give up their time. They have to get the energy. They have to get all the tools. God's tool was the sacrifice of his son. The sacrifice of his son. So we understand that it says that we are his peculiar treasure. We are his special treasure. You know, we says in this verse that we are a peculiar treasure above all people. And he was talking to the Jewish people, but he's also talking to us because us as believers that we're engrafted in yes. to the yes. Abrahamic covenant nah. that we are engrafted in to the chosen people or the yes. Jewish people. So we see here that he says, all the earth is his. That no matter what is on this earth is his. He created in the first place and he created us. And he is trying and he's seeking us through the Holy Spirit to be drawn back to him. To take back what is in the first place rightfully his. Mm. But he will not go against our will. He wants us to choose to be in his family. So when we see that when we saw and we talked about that when City Sickers, when Billy Crystal started dancing because he found, did that happy dance. Well, when God finds us and we accept him, as Lord and Savior. And Luke 15, 7 says, I say unto you, likewise, joy will be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. Mm, More than 
more than over 90 and nine just persons which need no repentance. Glory. So when we come and become the treasure of God, mm, when we become, there's a happy dance going on in heaven. Glory. Praise God. There's rejoicing going into heaven. Yes. Because he called us his own. Amen. Many people have rejected him. He says he came unto his own and they rejected him. Mm. But when we accept him mm. through the blood and sacrifice and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, yes. there's a happy dance going on in heaven. Glory. There's Amen. mighty rejoicing. Amen. When we see somebody get saved at church and, and walk the aisle and, and says that we get all excited and all excited. But that is just minute compared to what is going on in heaven mm. and the celebration that is going on. Wow. Now, we remember that even in that movie that they were going to try to guard the treasure. Because, you know, Satan is trying to take it away from us. Mm. He's trying to take that joy away from us. He's trying to make us fall. But you know, God telling the Israel people that he was, they were the apple of his eye. Oh, glory. And he protects those that trust him. Glory. So we see in Psalm 17, 8 says, <coughs> Keep me as the apple of the eye and hide me under the shadow of thy wings. So we see here that we become not only treasure, but we also become the apple of God's eye. Otherwise, that the inner part, the pupil of his eye, the thing that gives us sight. Yes. And that we become, he wants to protect us under the shadow of his wings. That he wants to wrap his arms just like the mother hen wraps around the people. He was speaking this to the Jewish people, but he's speaking it to us today. That he wants the treasure. And have you ever thought that we are God's treasure? Thank you, Lord. We are his treasure. We are his apple of his eye. That he wants to trust us. Lord. He wants to care for us. He wants to protect us. He wants to provide for us. Amen. So, he carefully guards us. So we see that he wants us and we are his treasure. We are his treasure. And we have to realize that we are more valuable than gold, silvers, and rubies. Even though he owns all the gold and all the silver and all the rubies and all the wealth of this world, that we are more valuable than yes. all the wealth of the world. Glory. Because he says we're a peculiar treasure. We are the special treasure. Mm. Because we are his. his. Yes. We are in his family. Glory. So we see this. <coughs> that God went through several things. He searched for people and he searched for you and me that would love him as much as he loved us. Glory. And then when we were found and led by the Holy Spirit, so he sent the Holy Spirit. 
the first he gave what he truly loved. The thing that was the most valuable to him, his son Jesus. Yes. For us. So that we could be that treasure. You ever thought about that? He gave Jesus the thing he loved the most. So we could become his treasure. That we would become something that was more valuable than anything on this earth. Or anything that he could create. Yes. He could create in anything. Because he's the God of all creation. But he created us to be part of that family, to become that treasure. And he gave his son for that. And then he sent the Holy Spirit to us to testify of Jesus. To tell us about the truth. Yes. The way, the truth, and the life. Yes. The Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. And then when we accept it, we become that treasure. But then God doesn't leave us there. Right. He's there and says that we are the apple of his eyes. And he wants to cover us with his wings. He wants to provide yes. for us. Thank you, and you say, well, well, sometimes I don't get that provision. You know, the problem is, is that we have a belief system in here. That what do we truly believe? Do we believe that God will provide for us? No. Or do we have hurts and pains? Things that keeps us to having faulty beliefs or stinking thinking. <laughs> and get these thoughts, well, God don't want to protect me. Because I'm, I'm getting I, so much evil, I'm being hurt. <laughs> but if we understand our beliefs and really look at our heart and say, you know, Lord, He wants to. To protect me. He wants to heal me. Sometimes we say, well, God heals some people and he heals another. Well, a lot of times what it is, that's there are thinking in the way we speak. Nah. There are belief system nah. that he only does it for other people. Mm. Or I, I've just given it over. We have to change our belief system. We need to guard our heart with all diligence. Yes. Just like that treasure that God guards us. Yes. We need the treasure that he give up, gave us, the eternal life. Mm. That begins from the beginning. Mm. Eternal life doesn't Start when you die and get to heaven. Eternal life begins when you accept Jesus. Amen. That's when your eternal life and your destiny comes about. Amen. Yes. And that's the reason why you need to guard your heart just like guarding that treasure. You need to guard that treasury of your heart. What let what you allow in your heart and what you believe. Ma. Mm. You need to guard it. Scripture says, guard your heart with all diligence, because out of it comes the issues of life. Amen. So we have to understand and guard our heart. Goes back to the verse I read. Is Exodus 19, 5. And I want us to get this in our spirit, because this is what he told the people, and this is what he wanted the people to believe and get into their heart. And that's what he wants to do for us. To really believe it. And get it into our heart. Yes. 
Get all that faulty, stinking thinking and the false beliefs because the hurts that we've had. Even the things that we haven't seen because we are weak in faith. Because faith is what is unseen. We see and it reads again. And this is what Moses had to tell the people, but this is what he's telling us today. Now, Therefore, if you obey my voice indeed, mm. and obey the Holy Spirit that is talking to you, the Comforter, and keep my covenant, that bond and a covenant cannot be broken, then you shall be a peculiar treasure. You'll be very special to him. Above all people. For the earth is mine. All the earth is mine. But we should say this. Not only all the earth is mine. His. But say. That I am his also. I am his treasure. Mm, Yes. He's going to protect me. He's going to provide for me. I'm very peculiar, but I'm very special in his eye. Very special in eye. And get that into our spirit. Get that into our belief system. Yes. Get all those faulty beliefs out of us mm. that keep us from being that treasure that he wants us to be. The benefits of being in his family yeah. is something that he values the most in our life, My. in his life, My. in his being. Mm. I said life, but see, life comes through Jesus. Mm. So we just have to speak that. I want you to say, I believe, I believe I'm God's, I'm God's peculiar, peculiar, special, special treasure. treasure. Mm. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> Father God, we come to you right now and we thank you that you sent something that you loved which was Jesus, to live, to die, and be resurrected. And you sacrificed him because of the love that you have for us. That we can become that special treasure that was seeking. And you sent the Holy Spirit to testify of Jesus so that we could come unto you. And thank you that we is in your, the treasury of your heart. Thank you. Father, we thank you and we praise your mighty name. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Thank you.